Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a red white or Boros aggro deck built around Delny, Streetwise Lookout, and Aggro's Cause Spirit of Justice. So Delny's a 3 mana 2 2, says creatures we control with power 2 or less cannot be blocked by creatures with power 3 or greater. So very nice ability if you're facing some green deck, for instance, where the opponent tends to have larger creatures, so we can still get in with our smaller stuff. And then if an ability of a creature we control with power 2 or less triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. So this is kind of like a 3 mana roaming throne for this deck, which is a card I'm quite fond of. And Delny curves exceptionally well into Angra's Cos, Spirit of Justice, a 4 mana 2-4, Double Strike and Vigilance, so already has some pretty good stats. And when Angra's Cos enters a battlefield or attacks, choose up to one target creature. If it's suspected, exile it, otherwise suspected. And to suspect a creature means it gains menace and it cannot block. So just suspecting a creature once can be pretty nice so we can keep attacking, prevent a larger creature from blocking if we don't have Delny in play. And then if we finally get to attack with Agra's cost, we can exile the initially suspected creature or we can suspect a second creature if that lines up better. We can even suspect our own creatures in order to give them menace if that lines up well. So it does have a lot of flexibility, but but if we have a turn 3 Delny and play Agra's Cost on turn 4, we can immediately suspect and then exile one target creature, and then on the following turn if we attack, we can do that once again. So that makes this kind of a creature exiling machine, and unlike Brutal Cathar, where the opponent gets their creature back if they deal with it, Agra's Cost will exile that creature for good. So this is an awesome combo. Then of course Delny can enable a lot of the other creatures in our deck as well. Brutal Cathar now exiles two creatures when it enters. The Reckless Stormseeker can also trigger twice with Delny in play, giving two different creatures one extra power and haste until end of turn. And Stormseeker is also a way for us to potentially play Agra's Cost on turn 4, trigger it, and then immediately attack by giving it haste and trigger it a second time. Now of course it will have 3 power, so it no longer triggers off Delny, but that's usually not a problem. And then we also have four copies of Kellen, the Daring Traveler, played turn two, turn three attack after playing Delny, and we get to trigger it twice right away, potentially finding more creatures. And later in the game, if we have a Stormseeker on the battlefield, we can give our Kellen haste to immediately attack and gain value. Now we're not playing any green lands in our mana base to use the adventure first, which is a choice. Of course, we could play some green-white fast lands, for instance, and then potentially we can adventure Kellen early. The drawback, of course, is that some of those lands will enter tapped later, or we have to play pain lands, which can hurt us against other aggro decks. And then Inti, another card that works quite well with Delny, until we end up growing all our creatures with extra plus one counters, at which point Delny will no longer work, but the initial extra plus one counters can be very nice. Also gives us a way to maybe discard excess legendary creatures that we have in hand and already on the battlefield, so we can find more useful cards, maybe discard some lanes in the late game as well, while getting plus one counters and trample. And then all our one drops also synergize with Delny. The hopeful initiate, when it trains for the first time, can now pick up two plus one counters as it trains twice, and then we can immediately remove those counters to maybe destroy an artifact or enchantment. The Lunar Veteran will gain extra life with Delny out, and then the Novice Inspector will make an additional clue token. So these are all fine to play early, of course, but then later in the game with Delny in play, they still provide a lot of value. And then our mana base has two copies of a Restless Bivouac, which can also give us an extra plus one plus one counter with Delny on the battlefield. So plenty of synergy to go around, as you can see. And then a Cavern of Souls naming human can make all of our creatures uncounterable, except for Agra's Cos. So if we do need to cast Agra's through Cavern of Souls, best to name Spirit. So we also make our Luminous Phantom uncounterable. Pretty sure that during the gameplay at some point I forgot to use Cavern naming Spirit and uh, named human instead when we needed potential red mana for Agra's Cos. And then a few more red-white dual lands for mana fixing. Drawing multiple sundown passes early can be annoying, but we do need red mana if we want to activate Bivouac, for instance. Cavern of Souls is not going to help there. And we also need red mana to channel Crucible, if that's something we're interested in. And then plenty of planes, so we can make sure we can cast all these white one-drops early. And uh, as I've said, we could include some green mana for Kellen's adventure, but that does have its drawbacks as well. And then Iganjo can also be channeled for pretty cheap and be used as another removal spell. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and we've got a Keeper. Stormseeker, perfect for giving Agra's Cause haste so we can immediately exile a creature after suspecting it. Facing red aggro. And of course the Vigilance is also going to come in handy.
don't care too much if Inti dies. Although I guess we do still need to find a fourth land. For now, Kumano. And another Phoenix Jake take two. Okay, so if we want to maximize our odds of uh, playing a hasty Agros cost next turn, I would attack, getting rid of a card in hand, maybe the other Agros cost. And then if I hit a land, I can play it. Second main Stormseeker, and then next turn hasty Agros cost. They could, of course, have a Lightning Strike for Stormseeker, but I don't hate that idea. Don't think I'll have time to play two of these. Found an initiate instead. Well, I think we still stick to the plan. Could also go Inspector, sack the clue to draw, but that seems kind of weak. Although now, of course, we missed out on a bunch of damage. It's gonna be a Shivan Devastator, so opponents going all in with their flying creatures. And uh, no land, did find Delny. So not super useful to play Agra's second main, should we exile a land. So I guess we'll just Brutal Cathar, Exile Devastator. To try and stem the bleeding somewhat. And then I might keep Inti back while we attack with our werewolves. And we can get rid of the Inspector to maybe still exile land. And now Stormseeker survives a Lightning Strike. Okay. Inti can block, and next turn Hasty Agro's Goss can suspect two creatures or exile one of them. It's gonna be an adversary for starters. Make that two. And our opponent goes all out. Okay. So play Agros Koss. Probably should have uh, discarded the land instead. But that's fine, because our opponent is just dead to 3 power double strike, plus what we have in play. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a little land heavy. But it's functional. Play Kellen, clear a path with Brutal Cathar, so we can hopefully find more creatures. But depending on the matchup, we might prefer Thalia. Well, against blue white, I'm gonna assume Thalia first makes more sense. Now they can't use a two mana counter spell. And we'll just go with a beat town plan. That way we can give Kellen haste next turn. Stormseeker also good at punishing control decks. Find a backup Thalia, alright. And a cavern, I guess, isn't bad against control, making our creatures uncounterable. Sure, we'll keep it on top. Thalia's back. And a temporary lockdown does get rid of our two drops and our tokens. But Stormseeker is still alive. So yeah, that was a very good answer. Our opponent also able to keep it daytime. And Jace is next. Shrinks down Stormseeker. And a Kellen should present lethal here. Five damage going face. Plus we get to trigger Kellen. Agro's cost, not a bad one. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. In 
initiate into either Kellen or Thalia. Stormseeker giving Kellen haste is maybe a good reason to start with Thalia, but we'll see what we're up against. Turn one swamp. And it seems like they have a cut down in hand. So we'll attack play Thalia. If they want to take out initiate, they can do so. But then they won't have a cheap answer for Thalia left. So we're not going to waste any time. Get in with a Stormseeker. And next turn, hopefully find more action with Kellen. The Life of Toshiro, excellent answer to Thalia. So we miss out on one life by not playing Veteran first, but we might find a better one drop that doesn't die to Life of Toshiro. Bivouac, I don't really want to draw. Still playing Veteran, even though they can kill it, otherwise they would gain two. And uh, yeah, our hand's not super exciting for this type of matchup. If our opponent plays a shield root, we're gonna want access to some removal. A Liliana instead can sack Kellen, play another one. So that's not too bad. And an inspector. So this is step one. Do we care about Liliana plussing for a turn? The concern is mainly that they can then protect it and then get another minus two out of it. So it is still a little bit safer to take it out here. Find a Brutal Guitar, that's good. And Inspector protects us from another Liliana. I'm gonna hope they don't have any of those five mana sweepers. And there's one of them. Yeah, that's effective. So now I guess we could uh, just get some 1-1s one going, hang on to Brutal Cathar, even though our opponent knows about it. But this is where they're probably going to turn the corner. They're still at 7. Don't have any burn spells to close out the game. Field of Ruin aplenty. Alright, it is night time. So now Brutal Cathar is actually 3-3 three, three first strike. Or we can discard it to Inti and get some more damage going. Although I can imagine they have instant speed removal for Inti. So I think we prefer attack. And then just play 3-3 three, three first strike. Which, if they want to take that out, they at least have to pay some life. Assuming it's spot removal and not another cover-up. Cut down Phantom. If they aggressively use Field of Ruin, they could actually strip me of all red mana. Since we don't have basic mountain for now, play Cathar. If they Field of Ruin, I still have an Unsap Land to use my Clue Token at least. Alright, Ponon does use Field of Ruin. So we'll make sure to sack our Clue. And hope they don't use another one here. Alright, now we're fine even if they do. Yeah, having one basic mountain for kind of the corner case where the opponent has multiple Field of Ruins could be reasonable. Although drawing a mountain, if you have multiple white one drops, can be a little awkward. Get to untap. And we may as well play Inti. Ready to discard a land and put a counter on Veteran. Now the question is which land to discard. Iganjo has a bit of utility, but if they use Field of Ruin once again, I may regret it. They're just gonna remove Inti instead. Now, a Long Goodbye is a pretty clean answer to a Moonrage Brute, since they don't have to pay the life to Ward. 
since uh, this is uncounterable. And now I'll go for the throat, so yeah, they were better off switching those two removal spells. Not everyone knows how Ward interacts with uncounterable removal. I'll hang on to my lanes in case we find another Inti. Opponent's down to one card in hand. Keeping Forge in hand also relevant in case they want to double Field of Ruin me again. Cavern of Souls. Well, get in for one. Is Lunark Veteran gonna go the distance? And looks like it. Well, that was a pretty unlikely outcome, but I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Seem to have a keeper. Thalia into Delny. Hopefully keep it alive to enable Agor's cost to immediately exile an opposing creature. And this could be the Boros Tokens deck. Hmm. I think we still prioritize turn 2 Thalia, turn 3 Delny. Thalia can still slow down the new 3 mana Anthem effect if they're playing it. They are currently missing red mana for the Goblin Token Maker. This is probably a reinforcement, or I guess they could sack a clue. Okay. At least the Boros Tokens deck is not known for having a lot of creature removal. So we should be able to get this combo online. They found red mana, but forced to play Epicure with it. And play Delny. Now we don't actually have a good attack with Thalia, since they could double block. First strike takes out one of them, but they still get to finish off Thalia. So we'll just pass here. And Knight Errant is next. Tapping two creatures. Delny lets us attack past it, and our opponent didn't find anything with mana value two or less. Okay, stick to the plan. This will trigger twice. Get rid of Knight Errant. And attack for four. So our opponent's not off to the smoothest start that I've seen for this deck. But their hand could still be powerful. Right, opponent goes for Recruiter, but they don't have any amazing attacks into the 2-4 double strike. Could see another Convoked Knight Errant, I guess. Nope, opponent goes for it. So we take 8. Possible they have another Recruiter in hand. So now Veteran to gain a bit of life back is not a bad idea. And that will also get doubled by Delny. And I'm not even opposed to just playing another Delny for the life gain, since we're unlikely to lose it, so we can attack first, and then uh, play the second main phase so we have an extra blocker, and our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's decent against Mono Red Aggro with Triple Veteran. I think it's still a keeper, but uh, it's not going to be great in every matchup. Put on Black Red, turn one Kumano, so it's still an aggro deck. Alright, so could just go tap Bivouac and next turn double Veteran. Could Veteran now and play another one next turn. But I'll just get the tap land out of the way. And then Delny can also gain us more life off Veteran. Performer, so it's a disguise deck of some sort. Take six.
And our opponent plays a face down card. Okay, so the curve of Delny into Brutal Cathar could be pretty effective. And then for now, just uh, gain some life. Their opponent can still block with a face down card, it's only power 3 or greater that cannot block. Thrill Seeker, okay. So now they turn it face up, they get to deal quite a bit of damage with a performer. Still gonna take it. Opponent's not gonna sank the Thrill Seeker. So now I'm lanking Veteran into Brutal Cathar. They might use Thrill Seeker on the Veteran first. Gets exiled thanks to etching. And we wouldn't be able to target their face down card because of Ward. I guess we can technically target it, just we'll get countered. So we'll get the rest. And attack. Hope they don't have removal for Brutal Cathar. Another Thrill Seeker could finish it off. But they keep pumping the face down card. So let's say this is another performer. Alright, turns out to be a Bone Brute instead. Opponent is tapped out, so at least they won't be able to sack to Thrill Seeker for another 10 damage. So we'll just take it. Yeah, if it was another performer, they could have turned it face up for one mana, dealt seven damage, and then still sack to the Thrill Seeker for another seven. I guess still wouldn't have been quite enough. Now we get to double spell. Inspector Storm Seeker. Gain a bunch more life. And make two clues. And then are we in a position to attack? Yeah, I guess her opponent doesn't threaten lethal unless they have another Thrill Seeker. So I could just give both haste and smash. Or we can leave a couple veterans back on defense just in case. Which might be a little safer. Still have Bivouac to help cross the finish line. More clue tokens we can sacrifice. I guess if they still have Thrill Seeker we die. With the Bone Brute this might be... Sacrifice, deal another 10. With a Cell Sword. Yep, alright, GG's. They got us. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a Keeper. Facing turn 1 Mountain. Alright, now I can play Veteran on 1 and curve out 1, 2, 3, 4. Looks like a play with Fire takes out Veteran. At least wouldn't be taking out Thalia now. And Thalia is known to be pretty effective against the red, making all their burn spells more expensive, and 2 1 first strike blocks pretty well. Just have to watch out for Monstrous Rage. It's gonna be a Godric, so at least Adversary doesn't have an attack. And we've got a Brutal Cathar next. At 4 Toughness, Agroskos also survives most burn spells. Three three adversary can attack. And a Storm Seeker, so I could Storm Seeker first so we can immediately exile a creature with Agroskos. Don't hate that idea. 
then we can pump itself. Keep Thalia back on defense still. Another Scoundrel. Goes for a Wicked Roll. So we can block the 2-2 Scoundrel now. And a Hearth Elemental. Nice last card to have. Draw two cards. But at least they're tapped out. And we can enact our game plan. Enters. Probably get rid of... Could be Scoundrel. So we can attack safely. Let's see what happens if I target the other Scoundrel to uh, prevent it from blocking. Then we have 6 plus another 6, 12, so not quite lethal. Yeah, I guess we just exile the Scoundrel then. Opponent jumps. We've got another one in case they remove the first aggress cost, so I also don't mind trading. Godric could fly over, so that one's scary. Still taxed by Thalia, so I don't think we can die to one unknown card. Opponent passes. And then, yeah, if we play another aggress cost, we get an extra suspect trigger, basically. Could also, let's see, if we suspect adversary and attack with the bivouac, giving initiate haste. Then our opponent has to chump Agriscos and still take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that seems relatively safe. Possible they have a burn spell here. Alright, Lightning Strike or Stormseeker. In that case, I don't have any amazing attacks anymore. Could still send Bivouac and Agris Koss. And then Bivouac pumps itself. We suspect probably the adversary. Yeah, let's see. So this can block, has Menace. If they take it, they still only take 7. So it's not lethal. If I attack all out, prevents adversary from blocking. Then we force them to chump with Godric. Yeah, that might be better. I guess there's also a world where uh, we could suspect our own creature to give it menace. But I don't think that would have presented lethal here. And alright, our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Probably gonna play a tapped land so we can curve Thalia into Stormseeker. Opponent with a hopeless nightmare. Discarding Veteran doesn't feel too bad. Their opponent on a red black discard deck, perhaps. Harvester is a good answer to Thalia. I think we just pump Thalia, don't want to trade Stormseeker for Harvester. Thalia down. Now we might see removal on Stormseeker now, too. It's going to be a case of the stashed skeleton instead. And Brutal Cathar, pretty decent answer to a token. Although it does enable the uh, case to be solved. Still seems worthwhile. And then now we have two werewolves, so if it ever switches to night, which we could do ourselves by animating bivouac, that could be pretty effective. Alright, opponent passes, it is night. 
and uh, yeah, Kellen's not a bad play. Can target it with a slasher, and then see where we end up. What does her opponent have planned here? Discard O'Hare and take lethal. Okay, that works for me. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing red mana, but don't need it right away. And then we'll curve initiate into Thalia so we can start training. If we're up against aggro, a double veteran will come in handy. And against control, Thalia's quite useful. The red green points towards aggro. Okay, get to attack train and uh, play out most of our hand. Probably go for Inspector over Second Veteran. So we can maybe sacrifice our clue and find more action. Alright, Cathar can answer Thalia. Goes for Initiate. Nope. We'll be able to train our smaller Initiate regardless. So they actually got rid of Veteran. Interesting. Well, we could uh, play our own Brule Cathar, keep up the pressure. Although it's not really blocking all that profitably here, to be fair. So I kind of prefer just sacking the clue, playing Veteran most likely, attack, just leaving Inspector back, and keep Cathar for later. So let's attack. It's important that we still cast a spell to keep it daytime. Now I guess if our opponent lets it switch to knights, then that also turns off our Brutal Cathar. And then we don't have a great attack. Alright, they've got another one. Getting rid of Initiate this time. And another Cathar. Well, I guess we go for it now. Not quite at a point yet where I attack all out. And alright, our opponent explodes. I guess they're too low and we can just attack with everyone next turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable, if unexciting, hand. No two-mana creature to train the initiates. And then nothing going on turns two and three, really. All right, let's take a mulligan. This is a bit better. We'll need to find the red mana eventually. But at least we have Kellen plus Cathar to try and clear a path for it. Very much possible that having some green-white dual lands to enable the adventure on Kellen could be worth it. But we're either paying life or potentially having lands enter tapped later in the game. Well, Kellen lines up pretty well here. Even though Cathar could exile Felden so they don't get to find any cards off of it. Attack first. And the bivouac could keep on top. Still gonna take me an extra turn to deploy Agro's Koss. But in the meantime, I guess we could play Brutal Cathar. Alright, fine. I'll go for the sure thing. And then wait on Cathar until they have time to deploy their 3 drop. This is gonna be an adversary. 
And Phoenix check. Thalia isn't bad. Also blocks adversary. Sure. And I wanted to give them another turn to maybe deploy Godric so we can exile it. So, no attack with Godric. Makes this uh, Brutal Cathar even better. Or we can Agros Cos. Give this uh, Menace and cannot block. So we can keep attacking. Feels like playing Cathar is still a bit safer. And then I might find a creature I can still play with Kellen. Just a land that can go to the graveyard now, even though it does enable bivouac. And then I'm not opposed to playing Thalia, just to have one on defense. Swiss Spear, step one. Another one. And adversary, so no ways to enable prowess. Go all out. Seems pretty straightforward. And our opponent's taking a lethal on the way back, so kind of a desperation attack. Could also play Eensy first, but there's no need. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, we've got a keeper. Can even start with veteran. Our opponent on a cave deck, so typically more of a ramp deck. So the hasty storm seeker is going to come in handy. Could go inti for the added pressure, since we have two kellens and initiate, we can maybe get rid of as well. And then play Kellen with haste once we deploy Stormseeker, basically. Spelunking lets them ramp. And there is a sweeper, 4 mana, dealing damage equal to the number of caves they control. So that one's gonna be pretty backbreaking, but I think I'm still committed. Attack all out. And I'll discard a Kellen to grow Lunark Veteran. So missing out on that value. But we'll see if our opponent's got the board wipe here. Our opponent passes, switches to nighttime. Okay, now we've got a bunch of extra damage lined up with another Storm Seeker. So let's say we play this, that's 10, 15 damage, so if they have nothing they would die. And if they had removal they probably would have main phased it to keep it daytime. Alright, I guess Sky Turtle still makes sense since it doesn't count as casting a spell. So it would not have kept it daytime. And then, I guess I should put counter on Slasher. In case they play the board wipe next turn, it would be 4 damage if they don't have another cave. Assuming they top deck it, of course. So, then this could maybe survive. Although, if they have another turtle, I'll regret it. It's gonna be a March exiling Veteran instead. Okay, points at four. And if they only cast one spell, Stormseeker's lethal. Of the beanstalk is not gonna do it. 
and our opponent explodes. A bit of a clunky start. Stormseeker able to punish them. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. I might actually hang on to the Inspector until after we play Delny, just so we get two clue tokens, since we might lack a little bit of card draw otherwise. Opponents on maybe a black-white life gain deck. Yeah, that could be kind of a tough matchup. We'll start with Kellen, so we can trigger it twice with Delny next turn. And hope they don't have a Voice of the Blessed here with a black land that's not going to work. But a bat can now take away Delny. Can still double spell Thalia and Inspector, but not going to be quite as exciting as triggering Kellen twice. Alright, find a Stormseeker. Good for next turn. And this is probably a matchup where we wouldn't mind finding Brutal Cathar and Agroskos to start exiling creatures. Cavern naming Vampire now for Hamalia, which will immediately explore finding the Pilgrim. And bat attacks growing Hamalia as well. Yeah, this is where we need a removal. Delny also would have let us attack past Hamalia. So we've got a few good top decks. And that's one of them. Okay. Something to be said for exiling the bat and getting Delny back. Cavern goes to the graveyard. And they can't actually play voice since Cavern's naming Vampire. And now it's nighttime, which makes our slasher even more threatening. Can attack all out and still have a one mana eye ganjo available. I'll still play the planes out here so we can sacrifice our clue. So, yeah, this uh, Cavern of Souls not doing the opponent too many favors. There's voice at long last. If the bat attacks, we can Iganjo it. And the bat's gonna see Iganjo. So not the best here. Now they know not to attack, I guess. Delny prevents voice from blocking. And Cathar can also just exile the voice, so... Yeah, possible exiling the bats is better here, so they don't get to gain any life. But yeah, either way, our opponent's super dead. Alright, so we got to see this Boros aggro deck in action. And uh, overall, the deck feels good, but not great. The matchups we would like to play are kind of creature decks that tend to play larger creatures, so we can exile them with Cathar and with our uh, Agro's Koss. The control matchups tend to be a bit of a coin toss. If we draw Thalia and Stormseeker early, we can certainly punish them. But if we draw too many of our Lunark veterans, then the deck feels a bit underpowered and can struggle to close out the game. And uh, yeah, in general, I found it to be playable, but uh, maybe not even the best Boros deck in the current standard. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.